There's so much I could say about what has drawn me to you. I could talk about how your great big smile grabbed me during that fall retreat hike with our friends and continues to grip me to this day. Or I could tell stories all day about the fun that you bring to our relationship, including what you termed as our spicy dates, <laughs> where we go on surprise adventures together. But I think what has captivated me even more is what I would describe as your heart that is in love with Jesus. Your love for him is why you created a playlist you call your Jesus Jams, <laughs> and why some of the songs from your childhood still bring you to tears. <laughs> I vow to ask for forgiveness when I have wronged you, and to offer forgiveness when I have been wronged. I vow to keep myself for you alone until death separates, for better or worse, in sickness and health, whether rich or poor. Katie, I am so blessed to get to walk this journey of marriage with you. In the presence of God, our family, and our friends, I, Katie, take you, Eric, to be my husband, knowing in my heart that you will be my constant friend, and my faithful partner, and my true love. Um, from this day forward, I promise to be true and loyal to you. I promise to love you faithfully through the pressures of the present and the uncertainties of the future. In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, I will strive to trust you and respect you. I promise to support you in your goals and to cherish you all the days of my life. No matter how wrinkly, how slow or cranky we get along the way, um, loving what I know of you and trusting what I don't know yet. Knowing that love is more than a fleeting feeling, but a constant choice that takes effort. And as we keep Jesus at the center of our marriage, um, I have such confidence that together we can grow in likeness of Christ and that our home will be a praise to him. Other, kindness, 
humility to admit you are wrong, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another when we do stupid things, willingly forgiving each other even when we do hurtful things, unselfish love which binds it all together. This is the life God is inviting you into in your marriage. But what is this life rooted in? Where do you find the power to be that kind of person in your marriage? If any of us are to be this kind of person, unselfish, patient, forgiving and humble, we have to hear carefully that first phrase that came before all the instructions. Before the list of qualities, scripture reminds you that you are dearly loved. You are loved by God. If you are going to love each other in your marriage, the Bible reminds you to root yourself in that truth you are loved by God. To all of you as Eric's family and friends, Katie's family and friends, today you will be witnesses of their marriage vows. So will you pledge yourselves to encouraging and supporting Katie and Eric as they seek to live out their vows? If so, say, we will. We will. So you already know what faithfulness looks like. You already know what it feels like to be loved. To be loved not because you are useful, not because of what you can do, but because God delights in you. Eric and Katie, you have declared these vows in the presence of God. And having witnessed your solemn promises before this congregation, by the authority of the laws of the state of Washington and also by the authority of the kingdom of God, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. You may kiss the bride. It is my privilege to introduce to you for the very first time, Eric and Katie Powell. Katie, I'm very grateful to know you and I'm happy that you're a part of our family. 
You've been such a positive, friendly person to be around, and Renee and I truly look forward to getting to continue to know you better. You made my role as an older brother extremely easy, because I know, just sometimes I know there's a dynamic of being protective when your younger brother is in a relationship. They're kind of like, you should watch out for certain things, certain red flags or something. But I've literally never had any concerns or doubts or seen anything negative in your relationship. It's always just been apparent how well you both work together, complement, and support each other. It's not merely in the words you say, not only in your deeds confessed, but in the most unconscious way is Christ expressed. It is, a is it a beatific smile, a holy light upon your brow? Oh no, I felt his presence when you laughed just now. For me, t'was not the truth you taught, to you so clear, to me so dim. But when you came, you brought to me a sense of him. And from your eyes he beckons me, and from your heart his love is shed, till I lose sight of you and see the Christ instead. And I love this quote because I think Katie does have a joy and a kindness about her that draws people towards Christ. And Katie and Eric have a relationship just built on that. I know that together, you two will be deeply a blessing because individually you have been, and so together it'll just be all the more like such a blessing, um, beautiful and big adventure to embark on together, um, to be blessed to be a blessing, um, yes. So congratulations, Katie and Eric. Um, I love you guys so much, so excited for you, and yeah, please raise the glass to Kate here. I just, I can't imagine a better partner for my girl. As, as a mom, you know, when, when she was little, you, you pray for the person that someday your child will marry, and you, you, you beg God to give, give her a, a godly man that will love her and respect her like Christ loved the church, and Eric, you do that, and I... I commend Karen and Steve for raising this this man that my daughter loves so much. So thank you. Um, may God bless your life together as you continue to and as He continues to use you um, to complete His purposes for your lives, whatever that might be in the future. Um, I'm confident that as you keep your eyes on Him, He will lead you and guide you as He has. And, and bless you forever. So, cheers to Katie and Eric. Thank you. And for a while, it certainly looked like they were trying to set a record for the long, world's longest courtship. <laughs> <clears throat> Although by 2021, it certainly seemed like just a matter of time before they would get engaged, and so it wasn't a big surprise when Eric finally popped the question last summer. But of course, that extended courtship has given them a great opportunity to get to know each other and deepen their relationship. And Karen and I, my, my wife, have been very impressed by their creativity, for example, as they've taken their turns planning their monthly spicy dates. And as a retired teacher, I thought it would be appropriate then to give them a homework assignment. So your assignment is to examine what God had to say in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Hint, hint. You can pull out your phones and find out what that says. But she also has love as that's been said here and a big heart which and a sensitive heart which I talked to you about when you came to me a year ago and asked her hand um, so take care of that heart 